Hello everyone, I am Mr. Su from JYU. Thank you for your purchase of our Hornet S drone. I would like to take a few minutes to show you how to operate the Hornet S. To have the best and safest experience with the Hornet S, please pay attention to the following precautions before you fly. Always fly in an open field. There should be no building or other obstacles to interfere with GPS connection. The Hornet S should always be ready to fly when GPS signal is normal. Never fly the Hornet S near high voltage power lines or cell phone towers as they may interfere with the radio signal and cause the Hornet S to crash. Never fly the Hornet S near an airport or any other FAA designated no-fly zones. The Hornet S is not a toy, so please do not allow anyone younger than 14 years old to operate the drone. Before you open the Hornet S box, please check the package. If there is any damage to the carton or the materials inside the box, please contact our sales support team for assistance. If you have purchased the standard Hornet S configuration, please check the following items are in the box. The Hornet S drone, four propellers, two with silver covers and two with black covers, the remote controller, a flight battery, charger, and charge cable for the remote controller. In addition to these items, the Hornet S FPB version will have a camera, FPB display, or goggles. The Hornet S aerial version will have a gimbal with camera and a 4GB SD card. If you have verified that all the proper accessories were included in the box, you can begin to assemble the Hornet S. If you look at the Hornet S, you will find that the engines are marked 1, 2, 3, and 4. Please install the black propellers on engines 1 and 3. Install the silver propellers on engines 2 and 4. Once the propellers have been installed, you need to check the battery capacity of the aircraft and the remote controller to make sure they have enough power to fly. Checking aircraft battery is simple. Press once on the switch. If the power indicator is green, you have enough power to fly. Now, turn on the remote controller. If the battery capacity indicator is green, you have enough power to fly. If it is red, there's not enough power and you need to charge the battery. The final step is battery installation. Slide the battery into the Hornet S. If you hear an obvious sound when the battery snaps into place and see no gap between the battery and the Hornet S body, the battery is installed correctly. We are ready to take off. Now, I will show you how to operate the remote control. You need to calibrate the compass before your first flight or change the first city you fly on according to the following steps. First, turn on Remote Controller and Hornet S. Make sure the Remote Controller and Hornet S are connected successfully. At the same time, put the left stick to the left bottom corner and right stick to the left top corner. Then, the Hornet S's LED will flash in red color. Now, you can begin to calibrate the compass. Hold the Hornet S and rotate it. Also, Rotate your body in full circle until the LEDs become green. This means compass calibration is completed. Please reboot the remote controller and Hornet S after calibration. Now, it is ready to fly. Place your thumbs on the top of the sticks with your index finger resting comfortably on the sides of the sticks. There are two ways to take off. You can use auto or manual mode. Let's talk about manual mode first. Put the Hornet S on the ground. Make sure that the ground you chose is level and make sure the head of the aircraft is pointed in the direction you wish to fly. Please pay attention to the correct flying instructions. The red LED should be placed facing front. The green LED faces back. Make sure the back faces towards you. If the direction is wrong, it may lead to damage because of improper operation. Turn on the remote controller. Give the back of the battery a short press and then press and hold the battery power button for 2 seconds. This will turn on the Hornet S. When the LED flashes, the drone is active and ready to fly. Before flying, 
you need to check whether the GPS is connected to the aircraft successfully, indicated by the green LED statue. Flashes of green means no GPS. It will take from 30 to 60 seconds to check whether the GPS connection is normal, which is indicated by the LED remaining green. For first-time users, make sure you switch to the beginner mode. There's mode label in the remote controller. Mode 1 is for beginner. Please don't remove the label before you're proficient in flying it. Please don't push the left and right stick at the same time in beginner mode. It's better to fly it one step at a time and not mix the actions. Let me show you how easy it is to correctly fly the Hornet S. Switch the remote controller to mode 1 and keep the antenna parallel to the ground. Press the left stick to the bottom right corner and hold it for 3 seconds. The motors will begin to rotate. Let the left stick return to the middle position, then gently push forward to take off. The left stick allows you to control both the up and down motion of the Hornet S and its rotation. Push forward on the stick and the Hornet S will fly higher. Pull backwards and it will descend. Turn the stick left and the Hornet S will rotate left. Turn the stick right and it will rotate right. The right stick allows you to control the horizontal motion of the Hornet S. Push forward on the stick and the Hornet S will fly forward. Pull backwards and it will fly backwards. Push the stick left and the Hornet S will fly left. Push the stick right and it will fly right. Press the RGB mode on the top left corner and you can choose one of the three ways to operate the LEDs. The three RGB modes are called Statue, Breath, and Rotate. If you slide the left wheel, you can adjust LED intensity in Statue mode. When you are satisfied that the Hornet S is at the right height, return the left stick to the middle position and the Hornet S will continue to hover at that height. Now, let's talk about automatic mode. The first few steps are just like manual mode. Put the left and right sticks in their center positions. Press and hold the lower right button on the remote control for 2 seconds, then release. The Hornet S will take off and hover at height of 2 meters. The landing process of the Hornet S is also divided into manual and automatic modes. When landing the Hornet S manually, Pull back gently on the left stick. Pulling too quickly will cause excessive speed in descent and may cause crash. Now, bring the left joystick to the lower left position and hold it there for 3 seconds to lock the aircraft. Quickly press on the power button. Then, press and hold the power button for 2 seconds to turn off power to the aircraft. Then, turn off power to the remote control. Landing in automatic mode is much easier. To land automatically, press the lower right button of the remote control. Once the aircraft has landed safely on the ground, turn off the aircraft and remote controllers. In the beginning, I introduced you to three versions of the Hornet S. The standard, FPV, and aerial versions. All three are very similar in basic flight operation. To use the camera, open the lid of the camera compartment by pressing the latch. Once the camera is in place, push the slide in the opposite direction to lock the camera in place. Plug the 2.5mm video cable into the remote control and the video display. For the remote S aerial version, insert the gimbal and lock it in place. On the upper right of the remote controller, there is a record slash capture key. Press and hold the key for 3 seconds to begin recording. Press and hold to stop the recording. If you quickly press and release the button, the Hornet S will take a picture. We can make the Hornet S return to takeoff point automatically through the return key on the remote controller. Above is the basic operation. When you're familiar with the drone, you can change the flight mode. We suggest that beginners always fly in first level positions until you become proficient in flying the drone. If you have any problems while using the Hornet S, please call product support for assistance or leave a message for product support on the JYU website.